Council come to order? Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mandy, would you please call the roll? Brandon Horse, here. Dan Strong, here. Carl Hall. I get a motion for approval of the tentative agenda. So moved. Branderhorst? Support. Hopkins? Any discussion? Okay, all in favor, please say yes. Opposed, no. Mandy, please call the roll. Branderhorst? Yes. Hopkins? Yes. Amstrad? Yes. Carlson? Yes. Motion passed. Uh, as most of you are aware, this is uh, Councilman. Banster's last meeting of his four-year term, and so I would like to uh, thank him for his service to the city of Pella, and I have a proclamation that I'm going to read here uh, concerning his service here. So, Kelvin, uh, this is a procl proclamation from the office of mayor, proclamation thanking Kelvin Banster for four years of service as Ward 2 city council member. Whereas Calvin Banster began his tenure as a city council member serving Ward 2 with his first council meeting on January 7, 2020. And whereas Council Member Banster has served as an advocate for citizens by working diligently and thoroughly to recommend equitable solutions to concerns. Whereas Council Member Banster consistently attended meetings asking thoughtful questions and being a valuable resource for citizens and fellow council members. And whereas Council Member Banster served as a Pella City Council representative on an advisory committee researching the essential services tax for Marion County, dedicating many hours of his time serving on this committee and others. Now therefore, be it resolved by the City, of, city Council of the City of Pella, Iowa, that on behalf of the City Council, City staff, and the citizens of Pella, we do hereby thank Council Member Cal Banster for his four years of service to the City of Pella, stated this day, the 19th of day of December, 2023. So thanks, Calvin, for your service. <laughs> well, thank you, everybody, and I especially want to thank the staff for all their assistance. Uh, with the uh, exception Mandy refused to remove item B2 tonight. <laughs> <laughs> which I asked her, but it's been a good experience and uh, enjoyed uh, working with the uh, staff. Uh, we've got a great staff here, and uh, Pell's got a lot of good things coming up in the next uh, few years, so. All right, this time we have the opportunity for uh, anyone wishing to address council regarding any agenda item. If you uh, wanna address us for that, please step forward to the microphone, state your name and address, and try to limit your comments to three minutes. Blessed New Year's, um, blessed holiday season, and I uh, really would like to uh, uh, extend uh, blessings to Mark. I know he's struggling. Um, <clears throat> point at hand. I thought it. Uh, I thought it ironic that this evening, um, and I'm referring to uh, resolution number three of. Uh, uh, taking excess funds, surplus funds from the electric department. And then we go to policy and planning and um, we just received notification that uh, our electric rates may be increasing, our power supply 
will help potentially be, well, will be increasing. They weren't sure oh, how much, maybe up to 5%. Um, I just don't, I, I struggle with the prudence of that. Um, you know, the, the citizens of Pella worked long and hard for a viable electric supply. And uh, I think they have received that. And I think they deserve the benefit of economical electric power. And I really hope that uh, due consideration is given, not just for funding. I, of all the years I was on council and affiliated with um, the electric department, I don't ever remember us going below 10 million. I could be mistaken, but I don't ever remember us going below 10 million in fun, um, um, reserves for fund balance. So I would caution you um, on that move. Thank you. Uh, hey, just a question. Sound. If people come, should they just leave that yeah, lay there like that? Leave it up there. We'll leave it? Okay. Bruce, you are a guinea pig there. So not, <laughs> <laughs> not the first time. <laughs> Thanks. Any, anyone else? <clears throat> with the same you can just here. leave it leave it lay there I think is can what he said for, yes uh, thank you Mr. Mayor uh, my name is Harry Ehrlich uh, 725 Countryside Lane here in Pella I also wanted to speak to item E3 and it kind of relates to <coughs> item H1 that's going to be a discussion item later uh, I've managed several utilities in my experience uh, and the, the whole issue of surplus funds really got my attention. And I know, I remember back in March when the, Mr. Nardini gave the presentations on the annual budget and we were talking about a possible water rate uh, increase and I had given input that I thought there should be an, uh, an analysis of the cost of service. And I think that's showing here for the uh, electric utility. And you, as the board over the electric utility, your fiduciary responsibility is to the rate payers uh, and to make sure that not only they get a good quality service, which I, do, I believe they do, but also the, the financial integrity of, of the uh, utility enterprise. And I think that it is in good shape. However, taking what is identified in, uh, in the report as surplus funds, when you have over five and a half million or four and a half million dollars of capital improvement needs that are identified in your annual budget that could be funded from, from those funds. And some of them are identified as important or critical uh, inner ties and other improvements. I believe that that's where the first priority should be stated and should be continued. Secondly, if you do look at wanting to transfer or use Funds, I believe that the ratepayers should benefit first uh, with either a rebate or a reduction in the rates or a combination of that. Uh, I have to acknowledge that I don't get electric service from the city, even though I'm in the city. Uh, I live out at Shady Brook and we get cooperative uh, uh, electric. They just gave us a rebate and they do it annually. They look at the cost, they look at the bottom line and what the, what the net uh, revenue situation is to their utility and annually they give a, either a rebate or they carry forward the need to the next year. So I would uh, recommend to you first that I don't think it's critical that you make a decision and I, I know that you want to move on uh, the funding of these projects. I'm not opposing those projects in terms of this discussion but I believe that you really need to take an in-depth look at where you are and what impact this could have on the ratepayers who put that money forward. Uh, there are some major ratepayers here in the city. Uh, over 30% comes from two companies. Uh, they put in the money. Uh, shouldn't they benefit back? Uh, all those mom and pop small businesses, and then it comes down to the 
4,000, 5,000 residential customers. So with that, uh, that's my input, and I would really like to have any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Anyone else? All right, we'll move on then. Can I get a motion for approval of the <coughs> consent agenda? So move. Hopkins. Charles Stone, any discussion? Okay, all in favor, please say yes. Oppose no. Mandy, please call the roll. Hopkins? Yes. Carl Stone? Yes. Raynor Yes. Yes. Motion passed. <coughs> resolution number 6647 entitled Resolution Adopting and Levying Final Schedule of Assessments and Providing for the Payment Thereof for the 2022 Sidewalk Repair Project. Mike? Oh, yes, Mr. Mayor, I'd be happy to explain this item. And for those in attendance and those watching at home, I'd like to direct your attention to the big board for a brief presentation on this item. As Mayor DeWard uh, stated, what we're considering this evening is a resolution which would approve a schedule of assessments for the 2022 sidewalk repair project in the city. Now, generally speaking, the project that we're talking about is the repair of sidewalks in the southwest quadrant of our city, and it's the green highlighted area up on the big board. Now, as far as the assessments we're, we're discussing this evening, they involve 121 property owners with over 200, with approximately 297 defective panels. Now, what we have here, if council were to approve this resolution and approve the schedule this evening, we will actually mail the notice and invoice would be mailed to the property owners in early January. It is also important to note for property owners that have amounts in that excess of $500, we will allow the installment or the assessment to be paid in the annual installments as well. So in summary, Mr. Mayor, we are recommending approval of the resolution um, this evening and we'd be more than happy to answer any questions the council may have on this item. All right, thank you, Mike. Can I get a motion for approval? So moved. Hopkins, Carl Stone, any discussion? Okay, all in favor, please say yes, oppose no. Mandy, please call the roll. Hopkins? Yes. Carl Stone? Yes. Ray Yes. Yes. Motion passed. Moving on to resolution number 6648, entitled Resolution of City Pella City Council approving final plat of Pumpkin Patch Farm. Mike? Oh, yes, Mr. Mayor. Once again, I'd like to direct everyone's attention to the big board for a presentation on this item. And this evening, what we're considering is a final plat uh, for the Pumpkin Patch Farm. Now, this is the property that's in the yellow highlighted areas just west of the city of Pella along Highway 163. And now the site in whole uh, involves roughly 365 acres. It is important to note that the final plat that we're considering tonight is being approved via the need to facilitate ag land transfer, transfer purposes. And as a result, essentially what we're doing is taking 20 existing parcels and combining them down into three parcels. It is also important to note that the preliminary plat was approved by the City Council on May 16th, and the final plan is in accordance uh, with the preliminary plan as well. Mandy, let's go ahead, please. Equally important to note, um, we also find the final plan is also in accordance with the City's comp plan. Now, finally, Mr. Mayor, we'd also like to state that the Planning and Zoning Commission reviewed this item after November 27th meeting and unanimously approved the plan that we are considering this evening. Okay, thank you, Mike. Can I get a motion for approval? So moved. Court. Randor Horst Manstra, any discussion? Okay, all in favor, please say yes, oppose no. Mandy, please call the roll. Randor Horst? Yes. Manstra? Yes. Carl Yes. Hopkins? Yes. Motion passed. <clears throat> Moving on, resolution number 6649, entitled Resolution Authorizing Permanent Transfer of Surplus Funds from the Pella Municipal Electric Utility to the City of Pella. Mike? Oh, yes, Mr. Mayor, I'd be happy to explain this item. And as Mayor DeWart stated, what this resolution would do is approve a transfer of surplus funds from the Pella Municipal Electric Utility to the city's long-term capital facilities fund for the purpose of funding engineering fees associated with the Pella Community Center as well as the proposed indoor recreation center. Now, in summary, leading up to this point, it's equally important to note when we approved the long-term facility plan, we identified two primary funding sources for the plan. One of them was cash on hand to fund the projects, and at that time, in April of, I believe, 2022, we actually identified $5 million of surplus funds, or cash on hand funds, to go towards these projects, and the other would have been a local option sales and services tax fund, uh, a tax bond, excuse me. 
Tonight, we're focusing on a portion of the $5 million that's proposed to fund these projects, and specifically, we're proposing to fund engineering expenses through <coughs> November 30th of this year, and we do have them listed up on the board of the last two line items that we have. Um, the rec center, the preliminary design and, and feasibility save that's been formed for the rec centers of $1,216,000, and the engineering fees associated with the convenience center is over $107,000 to date. So, Mandy, let's go ahead, please. Now, as far as the total transfer that we are considering this evening, it's $1,323,000. Now, anytime you do transfer funds from the utility, according to Iowa law, they have to be deemed surplus funds, and that's the reason why we're using surplus terminology tonight. But in determining the surplus, it's very important to note that we determined that what the city's minimum cash balance in the electric utility should be based off a formula by the American Public Power Association. In our calculations, we've came up to roughly $9.8 million of minimum fund balance for the electric utility. I would like to point out a couple of highlights of this, and also in that $9.8 million, it includes the ensuing years as a capital improvement project budget for the, for the city. It also includes, in addition to what the APPA formula calculates out to, which is actually $6.8 million, in addition, we're adding $3 million in excess of that to entirely fund the proposed AMI. That would be the smart meter technology for the electric utility as well, and that's how we're getting up to $9.8 million. So for clarification purposes, the formula from the American Public Power Association identified a fund balance of just right around $7 million. We've actually increased it by $3 million to entirely fund the AMI project for the city of Pella. Now, when we compared this at June 30th of last year, the electric fund utility had a fund balance of $13.7 million, so it's roughly $3.9 million in surplus funds. If we were to look at November of this year, Brian, I believe our cash balances are close to about $16 million. It's a little bit deceiving because our debt service payments for the electric utility are paid the following June on it, so we're using a more conservative number by going through June 30th of 2023 on it. So with this, Mr. Mayor, in summary, uh, staff believes as far as the transfer that we're considering this evening that we can be, make this transfer without impacting electric rates or services in 2024, and we are recommending approval this evening. So. Okay. That concludes the staff presentation. We'd be more than happy to answer any questions the council may have on this item. All right. Thank you, Mike. Can I get a motion for approval? So moved. Hopkins. Support. Carl Stone. Discussion. <clears throat> so let me just address a couple things that were mentioned before. Uh, Bruce Bruce talked about the electric <laughs> fund, said it's never been under $10 million that he can remember. We're not proposing to take it under $10 million. With this transfer, it's uh, you know still going to be twelve million dollars of of, uh, of uh, fund balance in our packet. We had uh, the Mike has a good good bit of information about where the fund balance needs to be, and he came up with a nine point eight. And just to to uh, <coughs> reiterate what he said, that's including leaving three million in the fund. <coughs> extra from what's required by law and what we you see is a need for the size utility uh, to uh, install LMI later sometime down the road so uh, there's no way this this transfer is, is impacting the electric fund negatively I think for, from my perspective the electric fund uh, the electric utility is a wonderful asset for the city of Pella that has millions and millions of dollars have been invested in this utility for the last many, many years. And uh, so I think from a rate standpoint, we're very competitive, if not a lot better. You said you get your electric from the co-op electric, you're paying a whole lot more than we are. Uh, and you talked about uh, dividends coming back, that's a co-op. They have to. They have to do that. So for us to take some of the excess fund balance from an asset that the city of Pella owns to use it for other projects is, in my opinion, a very legitimate reason to do that. The other thing is we've already spent the money, so this is a uh, uh, yeah. This is a bookkeeping to to uh, uh, permanently transfer it to pay those expenses for a couple projects that we've been working on. 
and from the very initial discussions we've had about these projects, we've said this is how we were going to do it. So there's no surprises here, and this is what we've been planning on doing. And in my opinion, it makes perfect, legitimate sense to do it. So. Anyone else? All right, then we will vote. So all in favor, please say yes. Opposed, no. Mandy, please call the roll. Hopkins? Yes. Carlson? Yes. Brainerhorst? Yes. Yes. Okay. Motion passed. <clears throat> okay, moving on to abstract of bill number 2141. Can I get a motion for approval? Move to approve and issue warrants. Brandon Horst, Hopkins. Any discussion or questions? Okay, all in favor, please say yes. Opposed, no. Mandy, please call the roll. Brandon Horst? Yes. Hopkins? Yes. Amstrad? Yes. Carlstone? Yes. Motion passed. Any council member have any other business you'd like to address us with this evening? Any member of the public have any other business you would like to address the council with this evening? If so, please step forward. And just, you can just leave that mic lay <laughs> and uh, state your name and address and please try to limit your comments to three minutes. Thank you. I'm Armin Banzani, 1117 Big Rock Park Road. And I can hear sometimes the speaker's picking up and sometimes it's not. So. Good luck with that, gentlemen. <laughs> You're coming through loud. Well, I'm, a, I'm an actor, so I, I project that'll help. I just wanted to say, on behalf of the Friends of the Fellow Community Center, thank you to the mayor, to the council, to the city staff for all the support you've given us this past year. It's been a good year for the Friends of the Fellow Community Center. We're getting a lot of support from the community, from organizations, and we're looking forward to working with you next year. We're excited to share with you early next year information regarding uh, the cost estimates we received, uh, the new the changes in the schedule, and working towards our partnership agreement so we can start working on grants. won't bore you with that information today, uh, though if you're interested, I'm more than happy to share it with you later. But for right now, I just want to wish you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thank you for your support. Um, congratulations to Councilman Banstra and Councilman Spohr for their service, and congratulations to New, newly, or soon will be Councilman John Butler and Harold Van Stryver. So I also give them my condolences. So <laughs> thank you very much. Anyone else? My name is DJ DeYoung, 113 West First Street. Last uh, meeting, I mentioned to you about the Marion County Express paper. I want to let you know that um, I've uh, given a few copies back here, so folks who are here um, that are willing to well, wanting to get that paper, it's back there for your perusal. Anybody that's here is welcome to. Thank you so much for your support for Marion County. Obviously, that's where we live. And um, thank you. Merry mm -hmm. Christmas. Thank you. Merry Christmas to you. <clears throat> Anyone else? All right, we will adjourn to policy and planning session to talk about power supply. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. We have a, just a brief update on the city's power supply. Um, and before we begin the discussions, I just would like to add a little bit of additional background on electric rates for the city of Pella. And as Councilmember DeYoung was here, and um, former Councilmember Schema, I'm sure could add, add to this. Before we initiated the city's power supply in partnership with the Missouri River that we're talking about this evening, in the early 2000s there was an electric rate study and at the time they surveyed 50 municipal electric utilities. We had the 49th highest rates in the state of Iowa as far as municipal utilities before we began our power supply strategy. It took six years to adopt the strategy but our partnership with the Missouri River I believe we formalized in 2012. When we went into Missouri River, we decreased our rates by right around 3%, and we haven't increased them since then. And recently, APPA did a, a, another rate study of the city's electric utilities, and this time they expanded it out to 149 electric utilities in the state of Iowa, and I believe we were in the lowest 20% as far as utilities in the state of Iowa. So we made a lot of traction, a lot of progress as far as electric rates over the years. And as we talk about electric rates, now and going forward, I think it's important to note, note that we talk a lot about the property tax rate, but equally impressive has been electric rates for the city of Pella as well. 
Now what we have this evening is we just wanted to have a brief update and let council know that we were formally notified by Missouri River that they're increasing rates by 2.5% on January 1st, 2024. Now there is a mechanism under the city code, it's called the electric cost adjustment that allows us to apply an automatic rate increase if we choose to pass it along to the consumers in the case we do get power supply increases on that, it's a passage of a resolution on it. It's important to note when we went into Missouri River in 2012, we identified a base rate on the electric cost adjustment, and this would have been power supply plus transmission, and they're right around $77 a megawatt, which means our current rates, which were set in 2012, had embedded in them a power supply cost of $77 per megawatt. Now I'm going to explain this when we look at the 2.5%. It's important to note that's a fact that's going to occur on January 1st, 2024. Council Member DeYoung were here, what he would also tell you is rather common, particularly when we first joined Missouri River, for them to estimate power supply increases in future years. Now very, very few times have they ever done so on it. Doesn't mean it's not going to happen in future years and we're treating it as it is. But we don't have anything official past January 1st, 2024. What we have is the 2.5% starting on January 1st, 2024. So Mandy, let's go ahead and get into the numbers, if we could please. Now, what I'd like to say is we are not recommending, in fact, under city code, we can't even adopt an energy cost adjustment. And the reason is, is we believe our power supply and transmission costs for next year, and that would be calendar year 2024, are going to be at $70 a megawatt. So they don't even cross the threshold of exceeding $77 per megawatt what's under city code. So we couldn't even pass this along via the ECA if we wanted to. Now, I would also like to say the reason why it was at $77 when we went into 2012 is we had a three mil buy-in fee, and what three mil is is about 5%. We paid an additional 5% in our electric rates as far as a buy-in fee when we went into Missouri River. The reason we had to do that is we were using existing resources that all 59 members at the time had paid for to provide power supply, so what they charged us was an extra 5% on our power supply for 10 years. That expired in 2012. So when we look at the rates, we've received a rate decrease that would have started on January 1st, 2022 of 5%. Missouri River is now just increasing up 2.5%. So we have some excess capacity in our rates this evening. Now looking at the 5%, we think if we were to receive a 5% increase the following year, we're still gonna be below the $77 per the energy cost adjustment in 2025. But once again, I would like to caution, this is for budgetary purposes, and it's best to be conservative at this time, which we are in our projections, but it is not uncommon for power supply agencies to forecast power supply increases on a go-forward basis, and we, are, we appreciate the notice of Missouri River, but it's not official, and we need to keep that in mind as well. So the takeaway, uh, Mr. Mayor and the Council, is under city code for the electric cost adjustment, $77 per megawatt. Power supply and transmission is above that. Council can approve a resolution which passes along those increases to the rate payers. Anything above that, we cannot increase rates via the ECA. We believe our power supply for 2024 is actually going to be $70 a megawatt on it as well. So we're below the ECA. And one last thing, and I should have mentioned this before we got into Missouri River and we talked about ECAs. This is one of the reasons why we started looking for a power supply. It was fairly common for the city to incorporate an ECA on an annual basis for power supply costs. When I first came to the city, I may be a little bit off on these numbers, but when we were operating our, our power plant, our coal, I believe we paid right around in the low 20s per ton of coal. The last day of operations, that was in the $70 per ton of coal on it. So we had no choice back in the day but to pass along power supply increases. Now electric rates have stabilized greatly since 2012 and going into Missouri River. But the takeaway is we're not proposing an ECA. We're still under the base rate that's included that's embedded in our rates of $77 per megawatt. So, Mr. Mayor, that concludes the staff presentation. Be more than happy to answer any questions council may have on this item. As usual, Mike, very detailed and a lot of great information for us. Thanks. Anybody have any questions? Comments? Good news. Mm -hmm. I to maintain our rates for a while yet in the future, so that's good. <clears throat> All right. Uh, just a quick note. He mentioned Council Member DeYoung a couple times. Uh, 
if you uh, are a person of prayer, I would ask that you would uh, keep him in your prayers because he has had a rough two weeks uh, between some chemotherapy, he's, he's got some cancer, and some uh, other other things that have happened, uh, just, just remember him. Uh, and, and difficult time for him. He's in Mercy Hospital right now. But, um, anyway. So with that, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Four. Four. You guys are twins <laughs> over there. You're right at the same time. That's true, and I'm going to give it to Hopkins. All in favor, please say yes. Opposed, no. Man, please call the roll. Yes. Hopkins? Yes. Randall Hork? Yes. Carl Stone? Yes. Motion passed. We are adjourned.